Hey, hey, welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss regarding introductal papilloma of uh, breast. So we are going to discuss what is introductal papilloma, common types of introductal papilloma, the common clinical features, the gross and microscopic features that we are going to see, what are the common differential diagnosis of this particular lesion and how do we treat introductal papilloma of breast. Introductal papillomas are benign lesions and they present uh, with serous and bloody nipple discharge. So that uh, needs to be emphasized that this is one of the commonest lesions presenting with bloody, uh, bloody nipple discharge. Though it can present with a serous uh, discharge as well, but bloody nipple discharge is quite commonly seen with introductal papillomas. Introductal papillomas can be of two types, central introductal papillomas, which arises from large tectiferous ducts, usually solitary in nature, single, and clinical feature, it manifests as a retroarular mass and often presents with bloody nipple discharge. Peripheral interactal papillomas, on the other hand, they are multiple, so they are called as papillomatosis. Involves uh, TDLU, terminal ductal lobular unit, uh, is involved, and generally it is an incidental di diagnosis without any uh, without any discharge or any mass. So these two are the common types of introductal papillomas now if you could see the microscopic feature there is a characteristic papillary growth so papillary growth are there so these are the fibrovascular cores and these cores uh, this papillary or the fibrovascular cores are lined by both papillary both the epithelial cells and myoepithelial cells both are uh, there in the lining of this papillary and the fibrovascular cores now some of the cases may show epithelial hyperplasia and uh, apocrine metaplasia all those secondary changes may be seen epithelial atypia may be seen in few of the cases and epithelial atypia may even uh, give rise to cancerous uh, changes uh, dci it may show upgradation to dcis and even invasive cancers because of atypia the differential diagnosis common differential diagnosis includes introductal papillary carcinoma that is a dcis or it could be an invasive papillary carcinoma these two are the common differential diagnosis of introductal papillomas so the lack of myoepithelial cells are seen in invasive papillary cancers and even the myoepithelial cells are lacking in the uh, fibrovascular core region in case of introductal papillary carcinomas so the common myoepithelial markers isc markers immunohistochemical markers which we use are ck5 p63 calponin alpha smooth muscle actin so these are some common myoepithelial markers which are used in day-to-day -day practice to differentiate between interactal papillomas and papillary carcinomas the treatment the treatment of interactal papillomas without atp if there is no atp at all it has been debatable uh, whether it has to be uh, just an observation or it has to be complete excision Whereas uh, there is a uh, there is a wide consensus that internal papilloma with ATP should undergo complete excision because there is a likelihood of transformation into uh, DCIS or even an invasive papillary cancer. So let's have a quick recap. It's a benign internal papilloma is a benign lesion with some malignant potential, especially if on histology there is epithelial ATP. Retroalural mass with nipple discharge could be seen or uh, there could be just an incidental detection of intradictal uh, papillomas. Fibrovascular cores are uh, lined by epithelial and myoepithelial cells. The treatment uh, includes complete uh, surgical excision. So thank you. Thank you for uh, hearing and uh, please uh, do share, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.